Hello and welcome to a new series um, that we're going to be doing on the channel. Uh, you may notice that I'm not in Minecraft right now. I am in World Painter actually, and I am starting up a new map. So as you may imagine, the series is going to be the creation of a map. And as you can probably tell by the title, it is going to be a replication of the book Phantom Tollbooth. Um, so this is a book that most of us like here at um, the Melon Monastery. And so we decided that we are going to make a map based off of it. So this is going to be across multiple platforms. So obviously we're going to start out in World Painter and create the basis for the map. As you can see, it is 4,096 blocks by 4,096 blocks, as we did some testing, and that is about eight and a half minutes across if you're going full speed on a minecart. And so we wanted to measure it like that and set the level and water level to make it good for the um, views along, along coastline. And also, most of this is just default. So we're going to go ahead and create it. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is, first I'll be, um, it can be a sort of mini tutorial of World Painter, as I will sort of be going off my pretty basic knowledge, and I can explain what I'm doing. So next to me I have a map of the lands beyond, which is where the story takes place. So I'm going to be going off of this map, and I might put an image up just for reference. So you guys know what I'm doing. So first off we have to make the continent. So most of it is a solid landmass, but there's a little bit of sea around the edges. So what we do is we go to this raise or lower tool and then to lower you right click like so just right click I might zoom in there a little bit so like that and I'll just turn that down and as it reaches ocean level you'll see that it starts filling up with water like that so I'll work with this a while. So, this isn't very interesting. I've sort of, I'm just going to sort of terraform the coastline. And I will be back when I'm done with that. So, see you then. And we are back. So, I have laid out the continent to the best of my ability. Over here, we have the Moor Sea. Over here, we have the Sea of Knowledge, which has the Islands of Conclusions. And in here is going to be the Kingdom of Knowledge and surrounding areas. Up in this corner is the Mountains of Ignorance, Forest of Sight, the Doldrums. So now we are going to start to lay out more of the landscape. So up here we have the Mountains of Ignorance. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the same tool, except this time we are going to left click, not right click, and that sort of raises the area as you can see or, now, now you can see there we go it's a nice thing that World Painter does is that it sort of has contour lines so you can see where it's going and also you can real quick there's a tool where you can see the area from a 3D uh, perspective but we aren't going to do that yet as there's nothing particularly interesting about the area. However, there will be soon, because we're going to add mountains. There's also a raised mountain tool, which I will use after we get the area risen a little bit. So that takes up about this much area, I'd say. So we're going to start by just raising it. Nothing too difficult about that. It's going to be a bit hard to see right now because it hasn't gotten significantly higher. But as soon as it gets decently high, then we are going to start adding mountains. 
So I'm going to walk you through this whole process because this one's going to be significantly shorter. Okay. And so we are, I'll zoom in to get a better look at that. Yeah, so you can see the contour lines over here. I'll smooth that out. And that gets higher and higher over here. in the Mountains of Ignorance. And so we can also use this scale down at the bottom to estimate about how long this is going to be. That is 400 blocks, so I'd estimate this area to be about 800 blocks, and that goes down to about 400 blocks over here. But I'm going to make that a little bit thicker, because we have to fit a bunch of demons in here and the castle in the air. For those who are not getting any of these references, I highly suggest you buy this book because, or get it from a library because it is quite entertaining. Especially if you enjoy wordplay. If you enjoy wordplay, this is the book to read. So, raising this a bit more. And it is now about high enough that we can start raising individual mountains. So the way this tool works is that you just click and it raises a mountain. It's actually not that surprising. It's a bit slow. So I'm going to make my brush really big. Um, yeah, I won't walk you guys through this whole thing, but you get the general idea. So I'll come back when I have some mountains raised. And we are back. So I have finished up the mountains. I decided to use the raise and lower tool instead of the mountain tool because the mountain is better for freestanding mountains. And I'm using a... I'm making a mountain range. So yeah, I figured out the um, display tool also. It's command 3. So this will load up the world, and right now you can see our mountain range rendering in. Right now, not so good looking, but there's a reason for that. That is because it is all grass. And mountains in real life are not all grass, so this is going to look a little bit unnatural. Luckily, there is a tool to fix that, and that is the terrain tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select stone, and I can just, I'll set up the intensity to 100%, because we want it all to be stone. And I can just color that in. So once I finish coloring this in, we can go back to the tool, and this will all be stone. So that will make it look a little bit more like an actual mountain range. Of course there's going to have to be a few things to make it look better, but that's for when we get into Minecraft and actually start making the map itself. So you can see already from the few parts that have loaded, it looks much more like a mountain range now because it's actually stone few parts I have to patch up, but besides that, um, it looks much better now. I'm also going to add a little bit of snow at the top of the mountains and maybe some gravelly patches every once in a while. So, as you can see, uh, you can't see that, but um, at the bottom of the screen, which I'm not able to record because of uh, screen sizes, there's a little height, it says height, and then like right here is 215 out of 255, because 255 is the build limit. So basically you can see where your contour lines, how high they actually are. So I'm going to select snow, and that's going to be much smaller, so I'm just going to cover that up like that. It's just on the mountaintops. sort of 
on the very high contour lines. And of course you have to splash it around a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to get a little bit of gravel. This is going to be mainly in the foothills. and in some of the valleys. So after this we're going to start working on actual on the forest of sight. So that's going to be interesting because we actually add trees which is a bit different. Yeah, so you can see there's now snow at the top of the mountains. What you can also do is you can add frost so basically you cover in snow um, a layer of snow instead of just the snow blocks. So you can do that and do, do, do whoops, <laughs> it's on the terrain tool. You select it like that and then you can sort of add that there. I'll make that a little bit more broad. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm going to finish this up real quick and we will move on to the forest of sight. Okay. Give me a few seconds. Okay, so now you can see the mountains of ignorance in this corner. I'm going to spread that a little bit further along here. Like such. Okay, and okay, so the forest of sight is around here. Its border is near the coast. So, we're going to do that. First off, we're going to raise the area a little bit because we don't want the whole terrain to be flat and boring. So, it's not going to be much, just foothills, really. Okay. Do -do -do. So when you zoom in, you see that's pretty basic. We're going to have this in most places, just right here. We're doing it for the forest. And so what you do is, you see these areas? There's deciduous, pine, and swamp. So deciduous is a normal forest, and you can just paint a forest on like this. So what it's going to look like is just your average Minecraft forest, and it's going to take up this entire area. So I'm painting that on. It's flickering on my screen because of the very, very small pixels. It's actually a bit trippy. Um, and there's also a little clearing in the middle, but we can deal with that later. So it's a pretty big forest, so I'm going to make that pretty big. So, that is one of the easier things, just a forest. And next, we are going to work on the foothills of confusion closer to the south. So that that's pretty simple, it's just rays the area up. It's going to be a little bit higher than the forest because it's foothills and so you're sort of assuming there's a mountain range down here. So foothills like that. Okay. So <laughs> that was easy. And yep, that's good. And next, we are going to be working on the doldrums, which is an area in this place. So that area is sort of a gray area with nothing good to look at, so we're going to make it mycelium. Which I'm assuming that's, yep, that's what this is. And so the doldrums is where nothing happens, nothing occurs. So we're just going to make this whole area mycelium. 
and it's going to be, of course, completely flat. So the entrance comes in here, you go into the doldrums, you go around here, force of sight, value of sound, uh, Dictionopolis, Dictionopolis down here, Digitopolis is up here, and then you go Castle in the Sky, and then you cut across, and that's where it's going to end. In all seriousness, if you do not know what I'm talking about, please buy the book. It is amazing. Okay, so besides that, there is not much else. I'm going to add a little valley here for the valley of sound. But of course it can't be too shallow or else it's going to start to fill the water. Okay, so that's the valley. And beyond this, we're just going to color in some more biomes to make to give it more of a um, natural feel. And I'll be right back with you. And we are back. So we just uh, added a few finishing touches uh, here and there. And the map is pretty much done, just the basis of it. I may come back off camera after looking at it in real Minecraft and change one or two things, but for now, I think it is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it as a Minecraft map. So, yep, and I'm going to name it Phantom Tollbooth. So here is the export menu. This is pretty important as this sort of determines if your world's going to work or not. So, underground material stone, that's pretty normal. I'm going to add a bedrock wall so you can't leave the boundaries. And there's going to be a, there's going to be a void around it and it's going to be no caverns, no chasm chasms because it's not a basic survival map, this is a, an adventure map so we don't need to worry about any of that. Resources, we don't really need resources either. Other layers, we are not going to allow Minecraft to populate the terrain because that would mean um, actually, no, screw it, we're going to because that means uh, grass and stuff like tall grass, flowers, all that fun stuff so we are going to check that off and okay so I think we have all nether and end we don't have to worry about unless we're doing something that involves another at the end world type, large biomes, default okay we don't have to worry about that either structures, no structures export everything, yep 1.7 survival we'll do adventure allow cheats yeah we're going to do that for now and export so this is going to take a while so I'm going to leave it off here so thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next episode where we're actually going to start building the map so, if you like the video, like it, obviously. Uh, you can check out our other videos, many of which will be coming soon. Uh, we have our Citrifus video, which just came out, and we'll be having more of these videos, more Melon Monastery videos coming soon. And, yes, so thank you for watching, and see you next time.